hello hello everybody welcome back to my channel today's video is a what's for dinner but y'all this is the third is it the third i think it's the third cookbook collab that i'm hosting um this is now after this month it is going to be a monthly cookbook collab um i decided to do it monthly till the end of the year so y'all can get all of the cookbook recipe inspiration so don't forget playlist link Will always be in the description box below go check out all the lovely ladies they will be sharing their cookbook recipes with you guys and they will should have links in their description box to the cookbooks you can purchase or if it's a homemade cookbook then it'll just be typed out in the description box um, y'all seem to really enjoy this cookbook um collaboration when i've done it january february yeah the last two so i thought i would keep it monthly keep the inspiration going and i hope it inspires you all get out there use some of your cookbooks you got um we all love pinterest and all that but sometimes it's good to go back old-fashioned pull out an old cookbook and get to cooking so i hope you guys enjoy this um third cookbook collab so i have got three recipes for you guys two of them is coming out of this uh come home for supper cookbook i picked this up out a thrift store local to me so two recipes will be from this um, both of those recipes, super delicious. I'm so excited to make more. I have a list of recipes that I wanna make from this book because it is so delicious. And then I found this one also. This is one of the old fashioned <laughs> Campbell's cookbooks. I looked in here and it says from 2000. So this was published in the year 2000. I got it for $2. I have made several recipes out of this so far um, and for today's um, I've got one recipe that I'm sharing in today's video with this so I hope you guys enjoy I hope it inspires you get your cookbooks out dust them off and get to cooking y'all let's go ahead and get started So first we're going to start off with the pizza casserole. Y'all, this is so good. Family favorite. We will definitely be making this again. This recipe comes from the Come Home to a Supper cookbook. And this is super simple. And this recipe ended up making a, um, a the casserole dish. Plus it made an 8 inch foil pan that I put in the freezer to have for later. So first you're just going to cook up your ground beef. I've got one pound of ground beef there with about a half of an onion and I chopped mine pretty small. That's just personal preference. And then I've got our water boiling for our noodles. This recipe called for panay and I just used um, like the bow tie pasta. Luke loves the bow tie and so I thought this was perfect because it's a nice smaller pasta. And so I used that for this instead and the dog's hitting the tripod sorry <laughs> um, but I just cooked that up you want to make sure that you have nice salty water whenever you cook pasta because that's the only time you're going to get to flavor it season it up so I'm just gonna let the ground beef cook and then we will drain off any grease and then we will cook and drain our pasta And y'all know me, I always have to season my meat for any recipe. So I either use the SPG for the Suckle Busters or I use just salt, pepper, and garlic powder and some onion powder. Um, just season with your heart and use what you know your family is going to enjoy. So now that our meat is cooked and drained, I'm just going to add that back into the pot and I'm going to add in some cut up pepperonis. I'm going to add in a good cup or so of mozzarella cheese and then I'm going to go in with our jar of marinara sauce get that all mixed together and then once the noodles are done we will drain those and add those in also Mm -hmm. 
And now we're just going to add in our pasta. That was a whole box. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier, but that was a whole pound of the bow ties. So you're just going to get everything mixed together. That cheese is going to continue to melt through. And then you're going to put it in a greased baking pan. Like I said, you can do this whole recipe in a 9 by 13 But I wanted to be able to put some um, back in the freezer. And so I did a smaller casserole dish. Um, the one you see over there. And then I ended up putting the rest of it in a 8 inch cake pan. And I froze it in the freezer. And so this one recipe, we will eat it twice. Um, but this was enough, this one pan right here was enough for us to both eat, well, all three of us eat. Winston loved this. All three of us eat, plus Luke took it to work for leftovers, and then we have that whole pan for the freezer. So this is a huge recipe, and I actually cut back on the recipe. The recipe itself called for two pounds of ground beef, um, and so I didn't even add the amount um, that the recipe called for so if you do this original recipe it's going to make a ton of food so this is f definitely a recipe for a crowd this was so delicious um, so I just filled that up and then I'm going to top it with some more of that mozzarella you could also add some pepperonis on top um, I didn't but you could totally do that and then you're just going to bake this in a 350 degree oven for about 20 to 25 minutes everything's cooked you just want to kind of get it all nice and gooey and all melted through and here it is right out of the oven y'all this was so good i could not say that enough we will definitely be making this again i was so happy that i tried this recipe um we just served it with some garlic bread and this is a new family favorite. The next recipe is creamy chicken skillet. It is from the same cookbook, the cook come home to supper. So far y'all I'm telling you I have absolutely loved this cookbook. Um, so for this one, you're just going to cook up your pasta and then you're going to cook up your chicken and then you'll mix everything together. The recipe says that you can change up the veggies. The recipe called for some broccoli, some carrots, and some zucchini. I didn't have any zucchini, so I kind of left that out. And um, I just used broccoli and carrots. But there's a little note in the bottom of the recipe that says you could also add just like a um, bag of frozen veggies mixed veggies so that was the one thing about this recipe is you could kind of totally change it up um, veggie wise on what your family prefers so I've got my water boil in there with some salt in it to cook the pasta and then I've got a pound of chicken breast that I have just cut up into cubes and I seasoned it with that half of that packet of ranch seasoning and then the other half we will throw in in a little bit later so I'm just cooking that up. I also added some salt and pepper. You just want to cook that completely through. So one of the things I did change for this recipe is when with cooking the veggies, I just cooked them in the microwave because I knew that if I did them on the stovetop, that would take up a lot of time because raw carrots take a little bit of time cooking up so I knew if I put them in the microwave it wouldn't take near as long and it still worked out and came out just perfect so I got this Pampered Chef steamer basket I was so excited y'all I got that at Goodwill <laughs> so I just put my about half a bag of carrots in the bottom of that and then I topped it with that frozen broccoli I didn't add any water in there because I knew the steam from the frozen broccoli would help cook the carrots and then I just put some salt on there, I cooked them for a couple minutes, and then once the broccoli was done, I scooped it out, and then I put it back into the microwave and finished cooking up the carrots. Now that our water has come to a boil, we're going to add in half a bag of the egg noodles. Those are the medium ones that you could use whichever, whatever you got. And you're just going to cook those according to the package directions until they are nice and tender. 
So once you get your chicken cooked through, you're gonna add in one can of cream of chicken soup, and then you're gonna add in the rest of that ranch packet. The recipe didn't have you season the chicken with the ranch before cooking. Um, that's just something that I did. And so if you skip that step, you just add in the whole packet of dry ranch right here. But I really like the flavor that it gives when you're cooking the ranch in with the chicken. Um, I really think that helped with seasoning and flavor. Um, and so you're just gonna mix that all together. And it's just gonna make a nice creamy sauce. So while the carrots are finished cooking in the microwave, we're going to go ahead and add these two together. Now, this was a little weird for me. I personally wouldn't call this a creamy chicken skillet. I wouldn't call it a skillet meal because to me, a skillet meal is all in one. Um, and where it's having you cook everything separately, to me, it's just not a skillet. But this was still a really good creamy chicken pasta recipe. So you're just gonna mix everything together and then you're gonna add that broccoli in and then once the carrots are done, you'll add those in. Luke kind of thought it was like a chicken pot pie minus the breading and you just use pasta instead of breading. And I feel like you could totally call it that, but this was really good. I will definitely make this again. We really enjoyed this recipe. And here is my bowl. Like I said, y'all, this was really good. We will definitely be making this again. This was the perfect all in one dish. You didn't have to worry about any other sides because you got everything all in one bowl. So next we are going to make some scalloped potatoes. I did change this up a little bit. Um, so I'll have my changes listed down below. Um, but this was really good we will definitely make this again this is honestly my first time i've ever made scallop potatoes like homemade i've always just done the box and so this was a game changer for me so i was excited to try this recipe to see if it was something that we would like and luke loved this so this recipe came from the campbell's cookbook i'll try to find this um, recipe or cookbook down below since it was from the 2000s it's going to be harder to find um, but for my changes, the recipe itself called for cream of celery. And y'all know how much I love the ch cream of cheddar soup. And so I thought that the scallop potatoes needed a cheese factor. Um, and so I used that cream of cheddar soup for this. And then I also added in some extra seasonings and I changed up the onion a little bit. So I've got my cream soup in there, I have my milk, I've got some garlic powder and some paprika, some pepper and some salt. And I've just added all that in that bowl and I'm just gonna mix it together until it is smooth. And then y'all seen me slice up my potatoes really thin. I love using that mandolin slicer. I'll have it listed down below if anybody's interested. But y'all, it gets the potatoes super thin and you don't have to worry about almost cutting your finger off trying to do that by hand. <laughs> um, but this was so simple. And so I just took a layer of the potatoes and I put those down and I seasoned each layer with salt and pepper. And I feel like you could skip that step. I just did it. Um, but each layer of potatoes I seasoned with pepper and a little bit of salt. And then this is one of the other things I changed with the onion. It called for a lot of onion. And Luke likes onion, but I'm not a huge fan. And so I added only a little bit just to give it some oniony flavor, but it wasn't like big hunks. Um, and so that would be personal preference if you wanted to add more onion or not. Um, but once you put your onion on there and then I put a little bit of that creamy sauce mixture on there. And then this was another thing that changed for the recipe. I added shredded cheese. The recipe didn't call for any cheese at all, which I thought was weird, but we like cheese. So I topped um, the cream layer. I topped it with a little bit of... Uh, Colby and Monterey Jack cheese and then you're just going to continue the layers. I think I did two or three layers. You're just going to continue it until it is nice and full and then you're going to bake this at 400 for an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. You just want to make sure that your potatoes are cooked through and fork tender.
so here it is right out of the oven y'all it was so good Luke said it was really good I was pretty impressed myself so I will definitely be making scalloped potatoes again like I said I'll have my changes listed down below for you guys because this was this is a keeper but we served it up with some crock pot Monterey Jack chicken and some crock pot sweet carrots I'll have that video listed down below for you guys if you're interested but don't forget that this video was a open collab so make sure you go check out the playlist link and go check out all the lovely ladies that will be sharing their cookbook recipes with you guys i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i will see y'all in the next one bye guys